Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll have them up in a second, but just, just go ahead. I'll... Okay. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying this was all David Peterson's fault. <laughs> I wasn't even sure I was going to make it here, and then he said, well, you have to come and you have to talk about this, so I said, okay. <laughs> um, but basically, um, this is uh, a little bit on my interlace alphabet, um, which I use for Kellen, even though it doesn't have to be used for Kellen. But that's the only language I have, so that's the one it's used for. Um, um, I thought I'd start out a little bit with um, just exactly what interlace is. So if you can give me the next piece. Next. Thanks. There we go. No. Back. Back. Okay. okay. So this is just a little bit of what interlace is. Um, it's, it's essentially a, a two-dimensional representation of the, the three-dimensional art of weaving. Um, and it's been used in cultures all over, in metalwork, in stonework, in calligraphy, and yeah. all sorts of things. And I have some very pretty examples that are much bigger, so next slide. <laughs> um, this is from Nigeria. You can see here, you've got the interlace. Next. Thank you. Um, and um, some of these uh, medallions on this sculpture, uh, on this gate are all interlaced. So next. Um, of course, you know, the usual with the knot work, um, interlacing. Knot work is essentially interlacing that has been divided up into what look like knots. That's it. <laughs> yes. Next. Um, here, there's some interlacing in the calligraphy. Next. And of course, this is what most people think of when they think of Celtic interlace is the Book of Lindisfarne, the Book of Kells, all of the uh, manuscripts from um, um, the 5th to 8th century around then. Um, there are rules on how to do this stuff. If you go to the next slide, I think I have the rules. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, one rule is that you cannot have more than two things crossing at one point, and you always alternate over, under, over, under. Always. And if you can make a single continuous line, that's great. <laughs> Doesn't always work out that way. Um, next. Um, so um, I have, actually in the back, I'll show it to you later, um, the Bain book, which is sort of the authority on how to do this stuff. Um, and he has this method where you draw dots on the page, and then you connect the lines, and sometimes you erase, <laughs> and so on. Um, but his, his um, uh, shapes always, always work out to like the square or diamond. But in actual, um, in a lot of examples of Celtic art, it's more of a lozenge shape, so it doesn't have to be square. You can, you can make it slightly different. Um, and then I used, of course, this method to make my letters, which I think are on the next page. Yes, there we go. Some people may recognize this from the website. Um, basically, again, these are just, here, I'll, I'll pick this one. Um, you come in, you go here, over, under, uh, over, under, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, um, all throughout. And, and the letters usually begin here and end here. One of the rules for composing uh, a word or a short inscription, which is all this is used for is names and, and very short inscriptions, um, is that um, the ending of this letter needs to connect up with the next letter. Um, so that you do actually have one continuous line going through and defining what your name or phrase is. Um, and then these other shapes in green are just single um, lines of themselves, or in, in some cases two lines, um, that don't connect to the main line. And they're just part of the interlocking shapes that define what the letter is. Um, if you go to the next slide, this is an example that isn't on the website, so you get to see something new. <laughs> and um, generally, um, I arbitrarily decided that these inscriptions tend to start at the bottom and go up to the top. Because the, the justification for doing this in the culture is that it's um, supposed to be confusing. <laughs> it's supposed to be only uh, readable by somebody who understands what they're doing. And it's generally, again, only used for names, uh, maybe a short religious inscription, something like that. And so this starts here. And if you follow the line, it makes an L, and then an A, and then an N, all the way up. 
and I can I can show you in detail if, if you really want to, but it's it's, it's a longer inscription. Um, and one thing that, that David was confused on when we were sitting together on the plane is that it doesn't matter if you go back one slide. Um, it doesn't matter whether these appear in this way or tilted or reversed or whatever their orientation is. All that matters is that the beginning, the ending of one letter um, connects to the beginning of the next letter. That's all that matters. So um, anyway, that's basically how it works. There's an example in the poster room of how the letters were composed. And um, if anybody has questions. <laughs> Sure. Um, so in the, if you go to this page or the next page, like if, for instance, this page, uh -huh. uh, you have the arrows indicating which direction. Which direction it's roughly going, yes. Because, but, but that's kind of vital because you're filling up the entire space and so you can't tell where the curve because is. I, yes, because I'm doing that. And that is just easier for me to do on the computer because I'm not good at drawing curves. curves. <laughs> but is that, is that, is that culturally, uh, acceptable because it makes it more difficult to read and yes. limits the uh, legibility of it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. How do, it, it seems like there are different sizes and heights, so do, do you get gaps? Um, yes, sometimes you do if you look at the last slide again. Um, one of the things uh, that I forgot to mention is some of these shapes at the side here are just decorative to make the, the image symmetrical. Um, and so there are sometimes gaps that get filled in. Um, and sometimes I just kind of move the letters around to, to fill in more space. And the, when I was going over this to, to do this, I did notice that some of the letters are really small and some of them are huge. <laughs> Um, and I did think that if I ever had to do this again, I'd probably do a little less of that. But that's how it worked out. So, and, and one of the things that also happens is um, the line that goes from the end of one letter to the beginning of the next letter sometimes can be very long, <laughs> just to fill in the space and to, and to connect them. So, okay, anything else? Um, Parker has a question. Okay. Do you do the not work translation by hand in your preferred graphics editor? And uh, have you ever done this kind of not work on a physical artifact? Uh, I know, Parker, you aren't here, uh, but we actually do have a physical <laughs> artifact in the poster room, and we'll be uh, hopefully posting pictures of it. Yes. Um, generally, when since I have all the letters in, in, in GIF files on my computer, generally what I do is I open them up in a a graphics uh, tool that allows layers, and then I turn them around and put them here and put them there and eventually put it all together. And sometimes I just sketch it out by hand first, and, and sometimes I do it and hate it and go back to it three days later and do something completely different. Yes? <laughs> Thank you. Um, in, the, in the book at Kels, I believe that some of this work was created as a protection over the text, the biblical passages. Uh -huh. um, and how do you come across that? How do you relate that, or do you relate that to your language that you're creating, or the text that you're creating? Do you, do you see any overlap? Mm, this usually is used by itself and not in conjunction with, say, um, the regular script in the language. Um, so it's generally, um, I have on the website um, a couple of uh, repeating patterns, which are like names of clans and the culture and things like that. And that's really all it's used for. Um, so I haven't elaborated more than that. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> Somewhat late, thank you. <laughs> OK, yes. Um, I just, I don't know how many of us have seen her site, but um, I have a similar feeling that you've had where I look at it and I just immediately feel humbled. <laughs> <laughs> and. <clears throat> I was just wondering how long it took you to develop a style of writing so complex. Well, it, it did kind of help that I was really, really, really into Celtic stuff when I was in my <laughs> 20s. And I learned how to do all the calligraphy. And so I then learned how to do the knot work and to make designs. I probably should have brought one of those along, too. Um, but um, um, 
And, and so, and, you know, I mean, I, I can use this as an excuse to take things like Welsh in school. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I, I was just really, really, really into this, and I would sometimes sit and practice and draw little dots all over the paper and make little shapes and everything like that, just as doodling. <laughs> And once you get used to doing it, it's actually not that difficult. It just takes practice. So, any other questions? Um, sure. Um, it doesn't look to me, just looking at, this, at the symbols, here, that some of those knots are stable. Um, are, is this over? I mean, is, is, is this over a, a net, or are, you, are these just uh, being run out of, on a string directly? This, uh, the A knot, for example, wants to just pop. As, as, um, as yeah, pop. <laughs> that's because it's it's just it's like I said, the knot work is like an imitation of knot work. Actually, if you if you tried to pull it, no, some of them would disappear. Yeah. Um, so so it's really just a matter of, of doing the over under part um, in two dimensions on paper or whatever. Okay. Okay. And then there was one more question. Yes. Do have you built up any uh, practice of a kind of knowledge of letter forms that are easily confused for one another? Um, I have noticed, yes. I, have, I, I do sometimes get confused with this myself. And I have noticed that a couple of the letters, if you go back one slide, um, are like composed of, of, like the E here gets used, I mean, three times here in the L and, and, and um, sort of twice here and, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, and, and the enye is essentially a double twist, so it's almost like a double A. Um, but what you do is you just kind of figure it out, and and if you get a little confused, that's actually a feature. <laughs> so, so, and, and a matter of fact, on one of my posters, um, I, I misrepresented what one of the designs means uh, because I got confused <laughs> because I hadn't looked at it in a long time. Um, so anyway, okay. Thank you. <laughs>